Welcome back adventurers to How Hard Can It Be? Planet Zoo Series 1 Episode 2. Okay, that's quite long-winded, but uh, we're definitely finding as this series goes on how hard can it be to play this game, and there's a few tricky things you need to learn. Now, in this episode, we want to put a couple more of education areas in our Africa section, as well as expand it to bring in the African elephant, which will be sort of a headline attraction, if you will. Um, so, we're going to have to... Okay, we have a random giraffe roaming outside of the park. Uh, it's got a hole in the fence somewhere. Okay, well, we'll get the giraffe back in there first. Fortunately, no one spotted it because he's roamed outside. So we'll get the giraffe back in and then we'll come back and uh, sort out these education areas. Now then, something I've only just found on here, uh, which... <laughs> which probably means the reason why the uh, snake died a little bit earlier is that you have to go in and add a few bits and pieces. We need to change humidity, we need to change temperature as well. Um, and, as well as also obviously giving them a bit of privacy so you can close windows in and out and then you have to switch on other bits and pieces. So I'd never spotted this until just now. I've literally just looked at this and thought, oh my God, why didn't I do this on the other one? So we're probably gonna have to go back to the other one and change that. We wanna make sure that these animals are, or insects as they are, uh, are comfortable and that does mean probably going back to the other one and sorting that one out too. Now then we've got a little bit of uh, litter problem going on as well and the staff seem a little bit lazy to be honest with you. Uh, I think we've got enough. If I can find the bin we'll put a few bins in and we'll make sure the litter situation is sorted out before moving on to the elephant enclosure. Now then I know what they suggest is that you pause the game every time you want to do something. However, you know, I do like the game to run. I do want to see how it's going to run. I want to see what problems I'm going to encounter and I want to see, you know, any issues I'm going to come in for as we go. A bit like this bottleneck here which we're going to have to come back and sort out. That path's way too small. But without it being on, we just we just wouldn't be able to do that. And obviously on this one as well, they actually, although they seem to look through walls and trees and things when you put them over windows, they do seem to interact well with the scenery. So it looks like on there we're going to have to move. Yeah, see, they're just not really walking around it. So we're going to have to remove those and really free up that area. Yeah, it's moving a bit more freely now. That's much nicer. Yeah. I'm quite happy with that, quite happy with that. Uh, the, the fences do break, the fences do seem to break. We are going to get another giraffe in here. I think maybe a zebra, we'll get a zebra in here and really spice it up a bit, just make it a little bit bigger. It's quite a big enclosure for these guys. So we'll put another one in, we'll put some more food in for them before moving on. Make sure they're happy, which they seem to be. That one's not particularly happy, why is that one not happy? Put another food in, yeah. Yeah, you see, this is what I mean. It's nice to have the game running. If you pause the game, do all these changes, and then hit play, you know, there's gonna be so many things to deal with at once, and I'd rather just deal with them as we go. And as you can see here, we are dealing with them as we go, which is nice, which is exactly what we wanna do. I'm gonna put another staff building around the back here as well, because uh, there's not enough room for them to do it. So we'll have a double one. We'll make sure they've got something to do in there, make sure they've got some facilities as well. Just double check that we actually added facilities to these ones, which we didn't do, which we need to do. We want to keep the staff happy. They seem to walk away slightly less than what they do on Planet Coaster. We haven't actually had any leaves yet. Now then, we're going to have a little bit of scenery just in here. These are some pre-built items, little huts which we can add, uh, a base, um, a middle, and then a little uh, custom-fitting roof to it. And you'll also see as well, we've got some lovely statues of the lions. So we'll put them by the lion enclosure so people can see those on the way in. I think the I think it's moving quite smoothly there now, which is good. I don't think we've got too many issues there. This is our basic theme we've got. So we're going to put some educational boards in. People don't feel educated enough. So we're going to just stick a couple of boards in. I think these are TV screens. And then the great thing is with these, you can select any animal from it, but depending on what enclosure you put it by, depends on what animal it comes up first. They are really easily used. Place them down, use the drop box. The animal that's closest will be at the top. And then of course, you can do the one, uh, any one underneath if you really want to. As you can see here, we're going to quickly change this one because we did um, we, we did forget and uh, yeah, the centipede is nearly dead as well. So we're going to quickly change that and make sure they're happy. Uh, these are really popular actually, these little enclosures. It's up in. Now obviously with these babies as well, we kind of, we're going to have to get rid of them. I think we have to wait for them to get to adulthood before we can get rid of them. Uh, but we have a potential problem if they grow to adulthood, the males, and then might challenge the other males. I don't really want to build another cage for them, to be honest. I'd like to leave them in there um, for a few years before they uh, kind of 
get to adulthood. But we'll have to keep an eye on that. And again, something we have to keep an eye on as we go. Now this um, massive space next to the drafts here, to make sure he's happy. Yeah, just finishing off some of the happiness and then this we are gonna move on 100%. So one thing I notice here is that the mechanics only come once a year, which is why the drafts keep breaking out. So we're gonna change that so they come a little bit quicker. And we're going to call them there now to fix it. So this massive area here is where we're going to build our elephants. Now I have no idea. Obviously elephants are huge, huge animals. So I have no idea how much space we're going to need for this. There's still a massive bottleneck there as well. I think we're going to have to quickly change that bottleneck first. Let's um, completely re half this bit because this bit's a bit of a disaster. That's hell of a disaster. All right, so let's start this again. I know people can't come in, but get rid of that. Get rid of that. There we go. A huge area. Right, get lost there, people. Move the bin. Right, back to the elephants. So over on the elephants, we're going to use the concrete wall. Um, I think we can put glass. Cat has Googled it. It seems to be the way forward. And it does seem that you can um, you can use glass because the elephants only need grade two, which I find really, really strange. So we're going to pop some glass in. We're going to pop some glass at the back as well as the front. Um, so when we do open this bit, although it's not open quite yet, when we do open this bit, people will be able to view the elephants from the back as well as the front. Now you can slope it, you can change it, you can uh, do anything you like with it, to be honest with you, the, the fences. You can make single panels go up, you can highlight more and make them go much higher. So we are going to make them quite high, because obviously we don't want them climbing out. I would say climbing out, we don't want them jumping out, they're not really going to climb out, they might just climb over it, to be honest with you. So we'll have that bit quite high there for when when we have that path. So, is this cage big enough? I'm not sure it is, I'm not sure it is. Let's get a few items in here first. Um, and you know, some of these animals as well, they will actually drink from the the lake, the river bit that you put in. It's not necessarily all about the, uh, the kind of the water troughs and things. So I think we're gonna have to build potentially a pool here, which I think this is gonna have to be slightly bigger actually, this cage is gonna have to be going to have to be much bigger. But let's get the basics in first. It does say the elephants will take from these trays and we'll take from these water pumps. So we'll get a house in here. We'll find an elephant house. Uh, not sure how big the elephant house is going to be. Do we have enough power? Yep. Yeah. Looks good on the power front. So we'll join this up so people will be able to look around there. Be a little circle there so people can go around the glass. We've got the African section in. We have a nice little family of uh, elephants here. There we go, that'll be greeted with that. And we'll have an elephant on the wall as well to detract from the gates just as you come in. Yep, I like that, I like that. Right, elephant house, what have we got? Ooh, that's a big one. That's a big one. What size can we have? What size can we have? Right, so that's the elephant house. That is quite big. We'll put some hay in there. And I think we're going to then, yeah, we're going to have to extend this a little bit. Probably put a pole in in a minute. Couple of little touches around here. Get the sign in, get a donation bin, put the sign in back the front, get the sign in the right way round. Donation bin in. Right, let's get some elephants. So we'll send them to the trade center first and then we'll bring them into the zoo and see what happens when they come in to the zoo. Here he comes. He's not happy at all. Right, so what's he not happy with? Right, we need to change the terrain first. As we said, there's a lot of long grass here and I'm not a massive fan of long grass. And you can see now when I change and put a bit of rock in and put everything else in that everything balances out quite nicely. Um, we'll put some trees in. Right, they're not happy with those trees. Uh, we've got a nice big tree in the corner. They're happy with those ones. We need some little shrubs. So we'll get some, uh, shockingly, we'll get some elephant plants in. They obviously quite like those. Um, he's not happy, he's, he's struggling a bit over that. Can he get through? Right, so we're going to pause it and we're going to make this bigger again because it, it definitely isn't big enough. Definitely, definitely, definitely isn't big enough. So on the recommendation of the elephant, a second house is going in. Uh, we'll put some more shrubbery around it, some more elephant plants. And then of course we're going to need to put some hay in and, and check out whether or not the elephants are happy. Quick change of the terrain because the bit we've extended to is long grass and of course they don't like long grass particularly. And let's go again. Right, it looks like that toy may have been in the way because the elephants are collapsing and dying at the entrance there. Let's see what they can get out. And we've still got some changes. Still not big enough. Still not big enough. 
So let's go a bit further. Uh, we'll bring the concrete out. I've clicked the wrong one. I've clicked the wrong one. There we go. Bring the concrete out. We might leave this a bit bigger. I don't think this, this is big enough. Might be big enough. Quick terrain change. How happy with the tree? How happy are they? Still not big enough. Still not big enough. Right, and they also want some more, so we're going to have to get another elephant in here because uh, they are massive social group. Well, that elephant has gone straight through that pane of glass, which is grade two. So we're going to have to rebox that elephant and move him over there. And we'll quickly put something back in there. Uh, I think what we might... Mm. Uh, all right, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But it's still not big enough. So let's go even further down the back here so we can actually add a pool. So again, we'll quickly change the train before we drop it. A couple of trees in the corner. A couple of elephant plants. And we are going to drop the train. Oh, that elephant has gone straight through that pane of glass. Well, so much for grade two because this is causing a bit of a disaster down the front here. I think what we'll do, we're going to change this to the metal sort of wire fencing and we'll change those two at the back and we'll change those two as well and see whether or not we can keep the elephant intact because he clearly doesn't want to be in there quick check on the babies over here that's fine right now then let's make a little pool shall we there's some water and he straight in put the prices up the elephants are in he's still looking he's still looking at those people he still wants to charge them but very, very popular. Very, very popular when you open these new exhibits. Let's quickly save it. Are they happier? Right, so we have a problem here. The, <laughs> the lion is seriously injured. As I suggested, that when it got to adulthood, it has started fighting with its dad, probably over uh, pride. So we're gonna have to get rid of that one. We wanna keep the elder one. Uh, he's been the father and we will obviously keep the original female. And then we can go into there and we've got two in there because they were both them and we can release them. Release into the wild is sometimes an option depending on the animal or indeed cell. Uh, he, has now been, he has now been fixed up. He's still a bit injured, but he'll go back in there after going to the vet. And this is it. So we're going to pull this around here because this will focus a little bit later on some other bits. And we'll have some more viewing platforms over the lake there but yeah yeah coming across really nicely we'll put this bit in people don't tend to go down these parts it seems that people don't tend to go down these paths very often until um uh, until it's you've got bad. something the other end but we'll have a look we'll have a look and see what they do there we go they're going down to the first window they're having a good look in um they're gonna go down oh we've got some weather effects i've not seen snow yet not seen snow yet, fortunately, not seen it. Right, that one has now grown to adulthood. We'll get rid of that one for when they start breeding again. And there we are. We have an elephant enclosure, a much larger than expected elephant enclosure and a very, very busy area down the bottom. We get some special guests on site. I don't really know what these special guests do. I'll have to find out what these special guests do because I'm not really sure. But yeah, there's our elephants. So, so far it has taken several, several hours to do this uh, this basic looking park, to be honest with you, and we haven't really themed it the way we wanted to theme it either. So what we want to show you now is I want to show you some of the animals which make up the trade center and indeed ones you can purchase and adopt. Now there are two different types here. There are ones you can buy for money and there are ones you can buy for um, kind of like a, it's, a, it's a currency. It's not really, the currency really isn't a lot in this particular version. When you go into franchise mode and you're um, breeding and you're releasing to the world, you get this kind of currency. Uh, which which you can then use to purchase and do other things with. Again, in sandbox mode, it really doesn't mean anything. The value of these really doesn't mean anything. Um, there's about four or five to adopt at one time. Um, they have a little timer on as well, so you do have to be fairly quick in honesty. Um, again, in sandbox mode, it, it doesn't have a lot of relevance, but I imagine when you're in challenge mode, it's really, really important to kind of look out for, I dare I say bargain animals, but certainly cheaper animals as they come available. Maybe some youngsters as well, so you're not buying ones that are gonna require quite a lot of veterinary um, 
kind of visit over the later life of their year but there are a lot on here there's a lot of species on here and you know there's a lot we need to put into the zoo yet you know we've got uh, chimps we've got general monkeys we can do more african ones um crocodile is going to be our next one we've got some chinese animals in there as well we've got some wolves we've got some bears we've got some pandas you know uh, lowland gorillas there as well there is loads and loads to do and you think it's taken us a few hours to put that together and yeah of course we've made some mistakes it's the first time we've played the game however you know we've, we've not made that many mistakes we certainly haven't themed it the way we wanted to theme it but uh you know this is what we're like it's what we like coming into a new game it felt like when we picked up panic coaster that it was very much like roller coaster tycoon 3 i found it very very easy to pick up and just sort of do it um, with this one, it's you know a little bit more of a learning curve. I wouldn't say this is particularly like Zoo Tycoon, um, which was uh, released on the PC, Zoo Tycoon 1 and 2, back in the day. It was also available on DS. I think it was available on Xbox as well. And this is much, much smoother and seems much, much more in-depth. And certainly will have a lot longer life as well with Frontier, uh, likely to be pumping out some packs for it in the future. Now, the area we're going to make very, very soon is going to be a crocodile area. So rather than a themed area to sort of Africa or part of the world, we are going to have a crocodile and Nile themed area. We'll have some, uh, potentially some lizards there as well. Um, and yeah, that's the bit we're going to go through. But yeah, you know, as you look through here, these are the animals. You can see whether they're male or female and decide whether you want to breed. If you do pick some and put them to a trade center and then refresh, go back in, it will have more of that sex as well. So if you want four females, for instance, you can adopt two and then go back in and get another two afterwards. Um, you can also put them on contraception. So if you don't want them to breed, you can get a male and female. You can build a bit of rapport for them and then you can um, put them on contraception so they don't breed. But yeah, there is loads and loads of animals. I mean, if you want the ultimate zoo, we looked at the map and thought, wow, this thing is absolutely massive, absolutely massive. But in hindsight, actually, um, there's a lot to put in here. And if you see the size of the elephant cage there, you know, we've got hippos and rhinos to put in yet as well, which are undoubtedly gonna require quite big cages too. Now then, we're going to finish off this episode in real time as well. We'll have a quick look at the transport rides there, because um, you can have some rides in this as well. We're not sure whether you can have it as far as I said, we haven't seen much of the game yet, so we don't know whether you can go through enclosures or whether you have to go around or over them. I imagine that some of them will go through them. But we're going to finish off this game by kind of sprucing up the entrance a bit with some new bits and pieces, some facilities for our guests. Uh, so we need food and drink, because the entrance was completely forgotten about. We went straight over to Africa, and I think where people had came into the park straight away, that it had uh, you know, really detracted us from finishing the front area. So we do want to finish the front area before going any further. Um, and we'll get a few shops in, and then this massive space, which you see now on the right-hand side, will be our crocodile area. And we did see something on there as well. You can have some water kind of tunnels, and you can see tunnels. So we're going to attempt to put a tunnel in. We'll get them in, and we'll see exactly how that pans out and how well it sort of plays. Um, but yeah, let's get some food and drink in here as we look to finish out the episode. How are you enjoying Planet Zoo so far? If you're just watching it here on UK Theme Parks, how have you enjoyed watching it? Um, is there anything you'd like to see us do? Because we are actually playing this one live. Where Planet Coaster is generally pre-recorded. -pre we are pretty much playing this one live and we will certainly take some suggestions. Do you own the game? Have you got the game? Um, you know, we had to have a PC upgrade for this. When you see the future Planet Coaster series coming very, very soon, uh, you'll see it did suffer as the park got bigger and bigger and we've had to have an uh, upgrade in order to play it Planet Zoo. It does seem a very, very intense, heavy game. Um, and you know when the rain effects and things come on as well the park undoubtedly will slow down when it gets a little bit bigger but are you playing planet zoo are you enjoying it please let us know what you think of the game so far what you think's missing from the game potential expansions um, and you know and what you went for first really really interested to see what kind of animal base you went for first or indeed if you're looking to get the game which direction you would go in first but from UK Theme Parks, thanks for joining us on this special Planet Zoo episode. Um, this is going to be ongoing as and when uh, as we play it. So please make sure you tune back in and like and subscribe so you can get the latest from it. But the next one is definitely, definitely our crocodile enclosure and uh, our monitor enclosure. So make sure you come back for that and we'll see you next time.